Hi, I'm Kevin Dunn, professor of chemistry at Hampton Sydney College and author of the book Scientific Soap Making. Today we're going to be exploring the effect of pH on soap and detergent. This is important there's a lot, because there's a lot of confusion about the difference between soap and detergent and the effect of pH on soap in particular. To do this demonstration, we're going to need some common household items. We need some household vinegar, household ammonia, two mason jars, a sample of bona fide liquid soap, and a sample of dish detergent. We also need some medicine droppers, some distilled water, and one unusual thing. We're going to be using something called universal indicator. It's an indicator that changes color depending on the pH of the solution. If you want to and you have a pH meter, you can use a pH meter for the same purpose. pH is a scale used to measure the acidity or alkalinity of a solution. It runs from a scale of 0 at the bottom to 14 at the top. 0 is on the acidic side, 14 is on the alkaline side, and, and 7 is right smack in the middle. We call that neutral. The indicator we're using, called universal indicator, is going to change colors depending on the pH of the solution. It'll be red or yellow on the acidic side, green in the middle, and blue or violet on the high side, on the alkaline side. Okay, we're first going to start by adding some stilled water to each of the two jars. It doesn't matter how much water, just fill it up about halfway. And we're going to add a little bit of soap or detergent to each bottle. We're going to take a couple of drops of each one. Put the lids back on. And give them a nice shake. You'll notice they look very similar at the moment. They both make suds as you would expect a soap or detergent to do. We're going to add the indicator to see what the pH is for each one. So there we have it. Both of them are turning kind of a pale green. That's on the alkaline side of, uh, of neutral. And we're going to see a difference now when we start to lower the pH by adding vinegar. So what we've done now is you can see they're both on the red side. They're on the low pH side, the acidic side of neutral, 
but you'll notice there's a real difference between them. The genuine soap, the suds have gone away because the soap has been converted into fatty acid. But the detergent doesn't convert to fatty acid, it remains as detergent. That's one of the reasons that detergents were developed in the first place. The process is reversible. We can bring it back by adding household ammonia to each solution. We can see the soap is starting to come back. And now we've fully regenerated our soap. It went from, it started out as soap on the alkaline side, it was converted into fatty acid on the acidic side, and when we raised the pH again using household ammonia, it converted back into soap. The detergent, on the other hand, remains sudsy all the way from the top of the pH scale to the bottom of the pH scale. We can do this over and over again. I do this at home for my wife, and we just laugh and laugh. So we're kind of halfway there. We still have a little bit of suds as we approach the acidic side of the scale. And now that we're back on the acid side of the scale, the soap has gone away, it's been converted into fatty acids, which doesn't suds, whereas the detergent, even at low pH, continues to make suds. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it's helped you to understand the relationship between pH and soap. Soap is uh, an alkaline product, when you lower the pH and bring it to the acid side, it converts into fatty acid, which doesn't suds. And when you raise the pH by adding household ammonia or any other base, it will convert back into soap and once again restore its sudsing ability. Uh, detergent, on the other hand, continues to operate and makes suds all the way from the top of the pH scale to the bottom of the pH scale. Please check out my other videos on the HSCG video library, all on various aspects of soap chemistry.